Hey friends, DM Khan here. Thanks for checking out the channel. So this is episode two in my video series of recreating a Roots Radix rhythm. And if you haven't seen episode one, I'll put it up here and you can check that out right now. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the mix of big shift rhythm that we recreated last episode. And we're gonna mostly talk about the instrumental on this rhythm and then the next one we'll do the, uh, the vocal. So anyways, without further ado, Let's dive into the mix. Okay, something to note here is that I used a lot of um, master bus. It's called top-down mixing. So you can see I have all of these plugins that are on the master bus here. And, you know, in an attempt to sound old, right? And this is that, this is that um, vinyl plugin by Waves, which really added that kind of depth and I threw this plugin in kind of late in the mix and I had to rebalance some things so something a kind of a little bit of a disclaimer is like as I go track by track I'm going to start with the kick drum and I'm going to continue on you have to notice or note that you know sometimes I would add something on the master bus and then I'd have to go back and rebalance so it's just something to consider right all right, so let's just take a quick listen here of what we got. Okay, so you can see that it sounds really good. I have the vocals muted on this episode because um, when I upload the the version with the vocals i'm going to get a copyright strike so i want this video to be you know monetized for me and my efforts right um and then in the next video it's going to get flagged with a copyright strike which is fine and all of the all of the views from that that video will go to um, american music group which owns the rights to big ship um and it's funny because i think the song is so incredibly close that it gets a copyright strike because they think I'm actually using the original song. But whatever. I guess I'll take that as a compliment. Um, so let's just start. We heard that. And then let's turn off all the plugins. And let's just do a quick comparison. So I turned it back up so you could somewhat the same volume so what I'm hearing is the bass is like too loud the drums don't have that impact you know what I mean so I think what we'll do is we'll just start with the drums or if we want we can turn back the plugins just for another quick just another quick a b here So you hear that, the snare is just the loudest thing in the song, right? You can see it right here. Another thing that I do with the snare is I have the reverb routed to this fader. You know, and I could play with the filter, right? And I do that definitely, but okay. So let's let's dive in. Um, let's turn off the plugins again on the master bus, or let's turn them all off, and then we'll just start with the kick, and we'll just go through every single plugin that I used. I'm gonna leave this limiter on just because it makes it louder, and that's that's all. That's fine. So, I turned up the volume. So this is with the plugins turned off again. And then let's start with the kick. So, I don't know if you remember on the last episode, um, I have two kick mics in the kick. So, let's just solo this up. There you go. Okay, and here's the other one. So this is the Beta 52 kind of uh, 
the big one in the middle and then this one here is the boundary mic down at the bottom so it's naturally got more low end than the beta which is this one that one has a little more mid-range if we show the multi the meter here i'll just leave this right about there okay so if i turn this plug-in on Auto, you can hear a little bit that um, it's gated, right? I'll turn the gate off with it on. So it just kind of cleans it up just a little bit. Um, I don't have a lot of EQ. Let's turn off the turn off the EQ with it on. So I'm adding just a little bit of 3.2K, and that's kind of the attack of the kick. Okay. So with it off, and with it on, so it's still not completely gated. Now, let's listen to the next kick. So this is with it off and then on. So a lot more low end. I don't know if you can hear that if you're listening on good speakers. It's got a lot more low end because I boosted 60 hertz. There's also a little bit of compression going on. Uh, just a like just a dB. So here's the two. That they they pretty much have a similar setting except for the the boundary mic here on the right has a lot more low end. Okay, and they're both gated. You can see. When the gate's down, that's it's open, right? So they're both being gated. If I turn the gates off, I kind of cheated because I already cut out pretty much everything that uh, when I edited the drums, right? I cut out a bunch of stuff that it's just I just left the kicks because I time aligned these drums, right? I had to cheat because I'm not the best drummer. But anyways, so so these two tracks. I got them both soloed now. So that's both of them going at the same time with the plugins on. If I turn them off, it's just a little a little lacking, right? Now it's a little more in your face. So now I have what's considered like a pretty good kick drum sound. So what I do is I bust them together, bust one, and that's this track here called kick aux and i've got a lot of processing on this so this will probably make it quite a bit louder when i turn these on see how much gated how much more gated that is it's just that thick right so here is the kick aux track it's not gated here all I really did was just add some volume and some saturation using this line line amp. So, and a little bit of compression too, right? Another half a dB together. So that's really the first step, and then I attenuated it a little bit. Then the next step is this corrective EQ where I, I'm dipping a lot of the mid-range. So with it off, see it's it's got this like throatiness to it. Now that's cleaned up. And I wanted to gate it even further. That's what this guy's doing. This is the slate gate. And it's really gated. I'm actually surprised. I'm actually surprised at how gated this is. But when I turn on the bass, you know, it's just a tight. And then I have to turn on the drum bus processing to really see now it's got that weight 
So I'll turn off the bus processing for the drums. So let me, and the bass, let me just kind of walk, walk you through this because it's a little bit confusing. So these two kick tracks are bus to bus one, and that's this kick aux, right? Uh, I got one more plug in that's a compressor. But anyways, then that goes to bus four, which is the drum bus. And then I have more processing here. Another Lindell channel, which it's, it's not doing a ton, right? But, but it is. Um, virtual tapes, add some saturation and some weight. API 2500, I have the real thing here, but I figured not everybody would, so let's use the plugin. Um, Better Maker is an EQ. It's basically like a Poltec e style uh, EQ, but on steroids. <laughs> and then a little bit of Decapitator, just barely mixed, you know, just with a tiny bit of drive. So, so it goes kick one and two, sum together in the kick aux, and then that goes to the drum bus. And then obviously the drum bus goes to the master bus, which has more processing on it. So you kind of get it. I'm starting with the kicks and I'm doing something to that. And then those are going to their own aux. And then the aux goes to the drum bus or drum aux. And then that goes to the master bus. So every time those tracks go into another bus, it's adding a little bit of saturation and a little bit of je ne sais quoi, right? And that's what it's all about. It's it's those little tiny bits of gain staging and going through the plugins, you know, emulated line amps and those little bit of saturation that just gives it a record sound. You know, otherwise it's too clinical. And I'm going to get some enemies here, but I had this discussion with scientists um, saying that like certain distortions are pleasing to the ear. You know, and the reason that his music sounded the way that it did was because it was, you know, recorded to tape and through a board and then EQ'd and then mixed again through those. They probably had transformers on his desk. So every time you're going through, you're recording the tape, then you pull the tape back through the through the desk. Right. And they probably had some outboard EQs and maybe some compressors. I'm assuming they did. Um, and then that was printed again to tape. And then the tape was then going to vinyl. So every time you go through those stages, you're getting some distortion. But his thing was like, well, vinyl sucks. And, you know, um, it doesn't sound as good as just digital. Digital's better. And I said, yes, technically digital is better. However, there's a certain sound and familiarity that we have listening to those old records because it sounds old. It gives it that character. So, it, you know, but anyways, I digress that we're talking about the mix here um, and big up scientist. I'm a huge fan of yours and you are, you know, obviously the foundational mix guy. You know, you're the reason that we love this music, you know, you and King Tubby, obviously, who you learn from. Um, so it was a healthy debate. Um, but yeah, so back to the kick drum, the last plug in was you on this was an was a, a compressor so if we listen to that and off so it's not doing a lot but it's adding a little bit of weight you know and it's only it's compressing another db or so right so the first one had you know a half a db the next stage had another half a db this has maybe 2 dB, right? And that's that's the only compression on the kick so far until we get over to the API, which it's really only the snare that's triggering this compressor. Like if I turn on the snare, see that's, that thing is triggering it. The snare is triggering it, but nothing else, right? Not the kick drum that we're talking about. So that's that's it for the kick. Um, if I were to turn on all these other plugins, then you can really hear, you know, what it sounds like. I got to turn it down. Right? It's got a, a girthy weight to it. Okay? That's it right there. A lot of low end, lot really kind of in your face, very quick attack, or sorry, quick decay. Right? You can still hear the, you know, the attack from it. Okay, turning off all these plugins again. 
I just wanted you to get like the full effect of what the kick drum sounds like actually, you know, fully processed. All right, so now let's go to the hi-hat. And the hi-hat, the way I played the hi-hat was a problem because it sounds really sloshy and sploshy. I didn't, you know, press the pedal hard enough um, when I played. So it was like, it's like, instead of, you know what I mean? It kind of had this wash to it. So you'll see what I do here. Um, first thing is just a, is just a cut, you know, a high pass filter. So if I bring this over here. So without. It's just to get rid of the low end frequencies, but you, it's almost, you can't even really tell. Um, so here's the Lindell and that made it louder, but you can see here the expansion, the expander is, it's like when I hit, it opens up the gate. So it's in essence, making the parts when I'm not hitting quieter to give it more like a tit 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 tit, tit instead of ch -ch 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 -ch, right so let's listen to I'll turn off we'll just turn off the plugin on and off see it's kind of washy and then it's more concentrated and that's what this expander is doing and um, it's hard for me to describe the difference between an expander and a gate, but basically, if I could describe it, and I don't think this is right, but to my ear, it sounds like the expander is just like, it's accentuating the good instead of like cutting off the bad. It's like making the good parts louder and the stuff you don't want quieter. Whereas a gate is just, I guess it's doing the same thing, except it's more rapid. It's more like harsh. Um, a gate is more like to, to take the sound away completely when you're not talking, the gate would close, you know, um, whereas an expander is just like expanding the good sounds, right? When I'm hitting, it's, it's, it's coming down, right? The gain, this is gain reduction. So when I'm not playing or when the, when this, when the, the sustain of the note is starting to sustain, it actually turns it quieter, quicker. So it accentuates the tick, a tick, a tick, right? I'll turn it off again. And on it's like poking out at you every time I hit it and that's what I wanted okay and obviously I have some EQ here this is a 12 DB or sorry 12 kilohertz shelf and I cut some of the trouble because this plugin I have on my master bus adds a lot of trouble so that's what I did that so I was mixing then I added that Abbey Rhodes thing and then I had to come back and turn the turn the treble down on the on the hi-hat go figure and then this is a boost a 5 db boost at at 4.8k so if i accentuate this right it's too much but and then i did another cut at 220 and i'm cutting at 180 so if i turn off the filter there's more low end and that's just cutting it that's doing another one of these also, I have 17 dB of line gain, so it's adding some saturation, right? And that's it. So it just focuses the sound. That's that. Virtual tape, it just gives it a little bit of, little bit of mojo like I was talking about earlier, right? It's just to give some harmonics and some saturation. Now I could really snot get the snot out of this and really saturate it, but that's not what I wanted to do, right? I just wanted to, just a little bit, just a little bit of love. Okay, now what did I do here? I did an even more drastic cut. So this was really to shape the tone. Right, I've got an even more drastic cut here. I've got a big bell boost at like 4K and then a big cut here. Let's turn this off.
See, there's a gross kind of frequency that I cut out of there. So with it off, it's just kind of muddier sounding. It's not as cleaned up. Where now it's just like, it's present in the right spot. So that's the hi-hat. Okay, now let's talk about the snare. So similarly to the kick, we have a snare top and a snare bottom mic. So those are processed differently. And then, yeah, similarly to the kick, then they're both summed together in this snare auxiliary. And then I also have a secret trick that I'm gonna show you to get more body to the snare. And that's this snare boom track, but um, we'll mute that for now. And uh, so just know that these two are gonna play together and end up here in the snare aux, and then that goes to the drum bus. So if I solo the snare top, it's kind of muddy sounding, right? So this will gate it up, right? All you hear now is the snare, right? And then I got this guy next and this guy. Okay, so this is snare top. I boosted seven at 7.2K, which is like treble. Um, I boosted 6 dB on a high Q. I didn't touch, touch the top. I added 2 dB at a low shelf at 220. I added a lot of gain into it. Um, I didn't do any filtering. And then I have the, the compressors turned off. I really, you really gotta be careful when you're doing these kinds of songs about compressing your snare. You really don't want too much compression on your snare. Just, it's just the way it is, trust me. I know you, like you, if you mix any other kind of music, you want it compressed, but really the only compression that's going on is from the API 2500 uh, on the drum bus there. And then maybe a little bit on, you know, the, uh, the, the mix bus level. I think there's a tiny bit more compression in that. And that really the, the tape saturation is what provides the compression. But um, so if we just, if we listen here. So if I turn off the gate, right, you hear everything. So that's the gate, and all I did was add some treble, a little bit of the fundamental. If I turn off the EQ, it just gets cloudier. Gets more present with it on, more in your face. Okay, and then next is my favorite plug-in, the little radiator. And now it just, that made it a lot louder, but it also accentuated the upper mid-range, right? And then this EQ, see, you can see the meter right here. You see all this low sub sub information. You don't want that on your snare. You definitely want in that 180, 200 range. This all looks good right here, but you want it to cut. So I did another cut here and a boost in the top, right? And then all that sub stuff is cut out here. So I rolled this carefully at 133. Hertz, right? I did a little dip at 530. I added 2 dB at, at 3.5K and then a shelf to continue it on, right? So if I turn this off, it's a little more cloudy, not as present. And on, it cleaned up the sub lows. It's just, uh, right? Now, that is the snare top. Let's listen in isolation to the snare bottom. So, same thing. It's gated like crazy, right? So I cut it at 50 hertz. I, I boosted 12 dB just into the line amp to give it some saturation. I boosted at 220. I boosted 5 dB at 3.2K, and I took out some treble at 2 dB is a treble, basically. No compression, basically just the gate and some EQ. If I turn the EQ and the gate off, And with it on, 
it just gives that little bit of thwack, right? And if I solo, if I listen to both the snare top and bottom together, right, it's starting to sound, starting to sound like that, you know, Radix snare. Um, so I also did a cut, sorry, if I solo the snare bottom, I also cut at that same spot, actually more radically. And I got rid of a frequency here that was just too much of the mid range. I think I wanted that more to come from the snare top, right? Okay, and then now let's talk about the, now that there's some together, I did another gate and I added a bit of saturation from this plug in here. If I turn it off, you can hear that smack tip. You hear the little bit of hi-hat coming through. And then with this, all you hear is snare. That's it. Let's, let's, you know, that's the intro roll. Right? So that did it. Now I added another Lindell just to kind of keep with the theme of adding that saturation. I just did, I did really didn't, this is off. So I took out some treble. It was too bright, you know, and I did a tiny bit of saturation on nuke mode, just 6% wet. So it's, it's pretty, you know, with it off, with it on. So that kind of made it a little more mild sounding, not too much treble. Then I added a little radiator again. And then virtual tapes. So that added some, some, uh, right? And then another shaping EQ. So that's really it for the snare. Now, it seems weird that I'm doing all of these different plugins, you know? It seems like, why would you have so many plugins on a snare? You know what I mean? It's just little elements that I'm adding that slowly build up, right? And uh, like I said, sometimes I add a plugin on my master bus, like at the almost at the very end, I added this Waves Abbey Road vinyl, and it did something very drastic to the sound, so I probably had to go back to the snare and like, you know, take a little bit of the treble out or something like that. Um, so yeah, I, it's not a linear process, you know, you do the track level stuff, you do the auxiliary level stuff. And then when you're starting to, you know, mix in all the other instruments and everything, then you have to make changes again. So I'm just going plug in by plug in, but, um, you notice here that bus five, I have, I'm sending to this bus and this is what I call the snare boom. And when you listen to to it on uh, and off, you'll just be like, yep, that's it. So uh, what I do is I just take this EQ here and I filter it so that it's only really like the fundamental of the snare drum, which is around 200 hertz, right? So at 137, I'm cutting it off. And at 280, I'm cutting it off. And then what I do is I send a little bit of the signal to that and then I add some saturation. So what does that do? Well, it takes the fundamental of that, that 200 hertz and it's adding harmonics. So it's how, har how harmonics work is it takes the original sound and then it adds an octave and another octave and another octave. Or sometimes it'll add uh, even order or, or odd, odd order. So it'll add like a fifth and then, you know, the next uh, odd <laughs> interval. Uh, if you ever looked at, if you watch my sound sculptor one, I really show what the harmonics of that, the TS 500 does, does. And that's what this sound toys thing does. So anyways, let's just hear what it's doing. So first, just with the EQ boost. So without and with, and then with the little radiator. So I'm going to mute this. See how much less body there is? And then, ooh. 
So it's just a way to add more gusto. You're just taking that spot. I mean, look at the meter here, right? It's way up here. At, and then I'll mute it. And it's down here, 2 dBs lower, right? It's just a way to get more of that fundamental. And, you know, you might say, well, why don't you just like EQ the snare track? I mean, you could, but I found this way and I don't really understand. It just has to do with the summing, right? You're sending just the snare top, just the fundamental to an, to an auxiliary and you're filtering it and then you're adding a bunch of harmonics to it. And then you're taking that back and summing them together. It's better than just boosting the fundamental on the snare top track. And trust me, I've tried it. And I, I tell you, you should experiment with that too because um, I just found, found it to be a great way to add more body to your snare. So with, with it and without and with and without and with and without it just adds it fills up that body okay so that's the snare and i think it sounds really good um now on to the overheads so i didn't process the overheads separately i sum them together and then process them here on this overheads auxiliary so this is what they sound like in isolation I'm just turning it up right nothing special it's the, it's a pair of these mics the micparts.com s387 right sounds like a drum kit so i added some compression here and it is quite compressed probably more than it should be but in the mix, really, all you want to hear is that crash. You know, you don't want the overheads to get, a, get in the way. So let's listen to the kick and snare. Right, and I'll mute the overheads. See, you're missing out, right? You, you're missing out on something right? Doesn't that sound more balanced? That snare is really, really loud, I know. Okay, so back to the overheads. Then I added this guy, which adds some like distortion and kind of grit, which is cool on an overhead track, right? And then all I did was add some, a shelf. And if you, so let's listen to that crash. What was it? Do you hear how distorted that is? It's insane. So if I turn that off, versus, it, the, the vinyl plug-in, and it's because of this phase distortion. I've got it turned up a lot to add that, you know, sort of distortion. If I turn it off, versus, it's really like, shh, and that's what vinyl did, you know? That's, if, if you listen closely to those old records, you'll hear that the hi-hat sounds like, you know, it's got this like, really kind of weird distortion to it sometimes and that's from phase distortion and yes i'm purposefully putting that in because i feel like it takes it to that vibe to that old you know sound so that's why i'm doing it um so that's it for the overheads and then um so timbali this one's quite simple if i just oh. right i've I've cut them so that it's only when the timbali plays. And then I just put a Lindell on it. So 
it's not fair because it's a lot louder. But I've added 26 dB in the line amp with on the Unity gain, so um, it just adds saturation, right? And then I've boosted 3 dBs at 4.8K and and 4 dB, 3 to half dBs at 220 at the fundamental and a lot of treble. I added a lot of brightness. So if we listen without the EQ, with the EQ, so it just gives a lot more presence. Um, it I didn't compress it and the gate's not doing anything. So all I really did was add some brightness to this and some some bottom. Right, and I mean it sounds good. Onto the toms. So let's find a tom here. Doom doom. So it's kind of muddy sounding. With the I got a Lindell on here, where I'm adding 7.2k. That's the attack as well as some 10k, which is like treble, um, and a low low shelf 3dB starting at 220 and no uh, filter. So big difference. So that's without and with. And then just like the rest, I have an auxiliary. So the two toms are also summed to this toms track that uh, where I've added more brightness, a ton more depth. Like listen to that versus obviously it's a lot louder but it's also meatier you know i boosted 8 dbs at 110 and 6 dbs at 4.8k so that really fills out the tom sound here's let's find another let's find a low tom so the two toms together And without, without the, uh, oh, I didn't turn on the processing from Tom too. So same kind of thing. You know, I boosted 8 dBs at 100, 4 dBs with a 7.2, and a bit of a bit of treble. So this plugin, you really can boost the EQ and, you know, get a great, um, just get get a great sound, you know. That's why I love this plugin so much. And also by using so many Lindells, uh, you know, you get a cohesive sound. It's that Neve sound. So here's with both toms and all the processing on, right? And they the the sustain is like, duh, duh. you know, it's not long. Like I said, um, that's all of the. Uh, the, the parts of the drums we've gone through all the plugins for that except for now the actual drum bus so let's listen to just like a section to the drums okay so this is the drums on their own first thing i did was add a lindell Okay, and it's every this Lindell automatically adds a little bit of trouble, so you have to be careful. But I did add 4.8k, a, a two two point three dB boost at a high Q. Um, I didn't do anything to the low end; it's off, and I'm ever so slightly 0.5 dB at 12k a shelf. I'm adding um, no compression. The the um, gate is turned off so really this just adds more crispiness then here and i'll put this back up then i added a vtm and automatically man that thing just brought it to life when i turn that off like it just adds a thump and like an authority to it to the sound it also takes off a bit of like digital edge from the treble like listen to the snare before and after so this is with it off 
see it's like really peaky. Then with this on, yes, it's bright, but you know, it just, it just sits and it's, and it thumps. Speaking of thumping, here's the next plugin, the API. And really what this is doing is turning down the snare a little bit, but it's also accentuating the smack from the snare. So with it off, with it on, off, on, right? It just gives it a little more accentuation to the snare. It's technically lowering the volume of the snare, but it's adding a thump to the snare. That's what this plugin is really good for and the real thing. Now this guy, the better maker, when I turn this on, the low end's really gonna get there. This, the kick just, uh, even, even the snare off and on. So what am I doing here? This is kind of a complicated plugin, but um, first I'm filtering everything below 30. That's what this first thing is. Um, the next thing, EQ1, I'm just barely boosting. I mean, 0.3, this hardly counts at 180. Then this EQ, and this is like octave. So it's basically making the Q bigger or smaller. Um, so it's it's kind of mid midways. It, it might be like this. Um, so at 6K, I'm adding 0.6 dB. So these, I'm, I'm barely doing anything. And then this is your standard, um, not standard, but in a Poltec style EQ. So I'm boosting 1.3 dB or whatever 1.3 stands for at 60 Hertz. Um, and then I'm attenuating, well, I'm not attenuating. So you kind of boost, you know, 60 and then you can attenuate way down low. Um, and then I'm also, I'm also boosting at 12K and I'm attenuating at 10K. So I'm kind of like boosting 12, cutting 10. So it's kind of doing one of these push pull kind of things. Um, so yeah, with it on, with it off. So if we watch where the low end is here, it's coming up just past minus 25. And now it, it boosted it quite a lot. So in the low end, it really added, it added a nice girth to the low end. Okay. So, and then the decapitator is adding more harmonics and this is subtle, but it just, it adds more attack. Right? With it off and on. It's subtle, but it does it. Now, let's talk about the bass. So, flob a hole, big up. Um, if we listen to the bass soloed, it's got a lot of mid range. So the first thing I did was cut a lot of the mid range and do a, a slat like a slight roll off, right? This is 20 hertz. This is super low. So that's what the EQ engaged. And off. You can hear the string noise with it with it off. That thong thong thong, you know? And then with it on, it's more focused in the low end. And what I did is I cut 3 dB at around 200 hertz on kind of a, a weird bell kind of, this is the Infinity plugin from Slate, Infinity EQ. And then I cut out almost 9 dB at, 667 hertz you know very wide so if I turn that off it's where all that mid-range is on my bass I really don't like it that focuses it okay so that's like corrective EQ I'm cutting what's not good right and then the next one is I added the virtual tape machine 
and I cut a little bit of the base. Minus, yeah. Okay, so I'm just, it's, it's set pretty normal. I just turned up the input a little bit, right? This is the standard setting. And then I boosted into it and it's hard to perceive. I doubt it'll be perceivable on YouTube, but like it just adds some low end mojo. It's really nice. I love this plugin, man. So then this one is a compressor. So there's a, uh, there's been zero compression so far on the bass, and this is the only compressor that I use on the bass. And how many dB is it? One? That's it. And with it off, and with it on, of course it's louder. I always do that, you know? But you can hear it, it's going wah, wah, wah. Right? It's 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 got a little bit of life to it, and that's what I use compression for on the bass. It's just to kiss it. It's just to make it when it releases, it gets a little bit like wah, wah, versus just ba 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 wah, wah, wah. That's what the compression is doing, and I'm accentuating it with what I'm singing right now. But it's just to have it breathe. Ba 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 wah, wah, right? That's what, that's what I'm using that for. So here's another cut. And now this one, it really kind of took out a lot of the presence from the bass, but that's because the kick, right? They're sitting together. And if I turn off this, this EQ, now the bass is sitting up here, up top, above the kick, right? This just had it sit with the kick, you know, under the kick. You can see the volume of the kick in the fundamental is like hitting minus 20 dB. And the kick is just a, just a little bit above that, a couple dBs above that, right? And if I turn that off, it's too loud. So I was cutting, you know, some stuff in the low, low end here to try and match what, what was going on with the kick. And if we look at the EQ move on the kick, and here's the bass on the bottom, you know, I cut a little bit of the fundamental and I let the kick be a little bit lower is what I did. But I carved out a bit at 60 hertz because that's right where the kick is living, you know, 50 hertz. See, I got this roll off here down in 50. So if I were to get rid of that, it's got too much, it's in the way of the kick. But now that 50 hertz, 40 hertz range, the kick is living there. And then I boosted a tiny bit at 80 and I dipped a little bit around 80, see? Um, I don't remember doing this intentionally. I just, it's funny because I'm boosting here at 80 on the, the bass and I'm cutting at around 80 on the kick. And it's just to create a spot for each spot, for each, you know, um, thing, kick and bass. Uh, the other thing that I did here, this is to add more mid range kind of back. Um, this is a confusing plugin, I know, but basically I'm, I'm boosting everything from 85 Hertz, uh, by four dBs. So I am making more low end and then I'm cutting from 420 to 850. So if I turn this off and then back on, this was to, to perceive it on smaller speakers, if that makes sense. Um, it was just so that it needed more presence in that mid range, which I know I cut out all the mid range. Well, now I'm kind of trying to add some back and this, um, is a tube equalizer. So it adds a bit of like mojo and saturation, like we're talking. Um, and then I cut a lot uh, at 12 kilohertz. I cut 9 dB, but that's not, I don't think it's doing anything really. Um, so that's it for this guy. That's the base. And, um, so yeah, you can see that the, like, let's listen to the drum and bass. All 
right? So sounds good. Um, moving on, let's do the piano next. So you guys in the in episode one, you saw me um, playing with this plugin. And this depth here is to create that wow of it kind of being out of out of tune, right? And then I added a tape saturation. And then into the Lindell. There's nothing to really say about this plugin. It just adds some, it takes some of the harshness away. It adds a little bit of low end off the bat. Um, I did compress this piano because it really needed some life you know it needed to breathe um, and then I just turned the, the um, reverb on but before we do that I boosted at 200 220 I boosted at 1.6 3db and I cut some of the treble at 16k so and then I'm you know, compressing one to two dB, depending on what I'm playing. And you can see it's kind of like a musical, like if you watch this, this here, the release is kind of slow. So it's kind of breathing a lot. If I turn off the compressor, it just like, it, it's flat, stays in the center. And then with it on, Off, on. It just makes it sound more real. I don't know. It just adds a little bit of life. We're only talking a couple dBs here. Um, there's no gate. That's really it. So I'll turn this off. And on. It is louder again, but. And then what did I do? This was a move I remember after everything was else was going. Like I had drums, bass, piano, guitar, everything, vocals. Um, I wanted more mid-range and less uppers because the guitar, you know, it lives in this area in the 2K, 3K, 4K range, right? So if I turn that off, it seems a little bit cold sounding. And with it on, you know, it gave it more body. In isolation, it sounds a little muddy, not gonna lie. But with everything else in, you know, it needed that. I needed that lower mid presence, right? Okay, so that's it for the piano. Now the guitar. I mean, it sounds good without any plugins, really, because I tracked it well. But I'll show you what I did. First, I just started with the virtual tape because I want it to sound older. Right? Without with it's fairly barely perceivable difference so here's the guitar here's the lindell i made it even brighter and less lows you know actually i boosted the lows but to me it seems like more it gets brighter yeah so that what i did in the low end didn't really do much i don't know why i boosted 60 hertz but whatever. Um, the main thing that I did here was boost 10 dB at 3.2K, right? And and like I showed you on the EQ of the piano, I'm, I did a dip there, right? So together, or, and then I added a little bit of flanger. Uh, it's pretty subtle, just to kind of make it more realistic, right? And then I added another little peaky spike at at 4k so let's do with the piano plugins off 
and on. Just a little bit, you know, brighter. Just filled up the top. That's what the guitar is doing. So that's it for the guitar. Oh, let's go over the vibra slap. Uh, that's in the intro. All right, so all I did was cut some of the lows and boost some of the mids. I just, <laughs> I didn't even do anything to this. Oh, I cut a tiny bit. It's just to give the sonic flavor, you know, the Lindell. Um, so if we listen in isolation to this guy, that's what the plug-in without so it really isn't doing much you know it sounded good when i tracked it uh here's the the guiro this will sound different with the eq so it's just to add a bit of mids you know and i cut the treble so without you know, it's, it's too pokey kind of sounding. So I, I added more low mids and I cut the highs. And then here's a Lindell. I added some 4.8K 4 back and that's it. I didn't compress it or anything. Without, just kind of hurts my ears a little bit. And that EQ just kind of made, made it, you know, not as harsh. Um, okay, so let's turned on the reverb so what I'll, I guess before I turn on the reverb let's talk about like volume levels um, obviously the drums are the loudest y you could kind of see the kick and bass drum relationship going on but let's talk about the piano and the guitar in relation to that so if we listen You know, the snare is super loud. The bass is just like kind of in the middle. Then the guitar just kind of sits just under the drums. You know what I mean? And the vocal will be right above the piano. So it's like, it's like drums, bass, vocal, like vocals at the same level of the bass or even kind of on top of the bass and then piano and guitar just under that and then percussions just under that. So if that, I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, and then I kept it very basic with my panning. Um, the piano is just not even panned. It's just the natural how they mic'd the piano and then the guitar is slightly to the left and the guiro is slightly to the right. Um, the original track doesn't have a lot of stereo information, you know, so that's really it. And then if I turn on the reverb here, it's just to add some ambience to the piano and the guitar and the, the guiro, you know. Um, the only real other reverb is on the timbali here, right, you could hear that. So that's sending to uh, bus nine. So the other other um, thing that I did that's super iconic of this song is that reverb splash. So I've actually, I'm using my outboard reverb for that. And basically what I've done here is um, I've sent out from output nine. That's this channel here with the onboard IO. And then I'm sending to aux two here a lot which is to my outboard spring reverb. And on the insert of this return, which is the spring here, five, you can see input five. So it's coming in, it's coming in track nine, which is just, which is just an arbitrary uh, 
channel on my desk and I'm sending to my aux, which is my reverb. And then the return of the spring is track five. That's input five. And on the insert of the return, I have the West Finga filter here so I can filter it if I want, right? So you can see everything that has reverb sent to bus eight is my outboard spring. So I've got a lot on the snare, a little bit on the hi-hat. Um, that's really it. Some on the overheads are sent to the to the in uh, to it as well. So you can see here when I open this fader, it's triggering that, right? And I can change this. So you know. On the original, there's these huge splashes of reverb, like that, and that's all that is. And you can see it light up here. Um, this plug-in here is actually just to, to get rid of the sound of the outboard reverb, so you can hear that, right? And when I turn it on, it's a lot quieter. So that's what that's doing. Um, so that's the spring reverb. Now let's talk about my mix bus processing. And to be honest with you, I think I probably had um, these three engaged while I did the mix. So starting off is the other Brainworks Neve, which all I'm doing is I'm boosting a little bit of low end, like a tiny bit, 0.4 dB. I'm boosting a tiny bit of, you know, 1.1K, and I'm boosting a tiny bit, 0.6 dB at 5.2K, and then I'm adding some treble. But this plugin actually naturally rolls off some treble, so I'm just kind of putting it back. All this is really for is for some mojo. So let's listen um, to him, like, before and after and see if we hear a difference. It feels to me like it gets a little bit warmer. So then the Lindell now, um, I took out a hair of treble, added a hair of 7.2K, took out a little bit at 35. I really just added some um, unity gain saturation here. And I'm also using a tiny bit of the compressor at 21%. So this is on like everything. Now I'm compressing everything, but only mixing it in 21%. So let's listen to that on and off. So it's off. And on. Immediately got louder, but technically it's not louder. This is the input and this is the output. They're the same level. Here, I'll turn it off. And what that is, is because of this compression. It's bringing up the low level stuff and the high level stuff is getting compressed down. But you notice here, this release isn't really releasing all that fast. Well, that's because it's on auto mode and it's only 21% wet. So if I turn this off and on, it just brings up the RMS level and off and on this saturation is adding that harmonic character it's bringing it forward it's technically distortion but if i were to turn this to zero go back it just brings it a little more forward right um and also like i said this lindell adds a little bit of brightness it and it's not like technically i don't think it adds it it just it's like perceived brightness the next one is the tape plugin this is a cool plugin um, from soft tube and it adds a real nice low end so that's with it on and off see it's just a little bit anemic sounding Again, it just brings up that little bit. And you can see it's kind of redlining here, right? Which means it's going to have some crispy distortions. Like if I were to really drive this, 
the bass kind of gets out of hand and feels like pillowy. Can't believe I just said pillowy. If I go back, it, the bass is more focused, you know? If I turn it off, it just, it kind of, it kind of fall, the mix just kind of falls apart a little bit, you know? It still sounds good. It's just there's not that depth to the sound. Right? That kick just and the bass are just like glued together. Off and on. Okay, the next one is the virtual tape, which I know, another tape. Whatever. Listen to that. just makes it thump. Listen to the kick. It's just like, uh. And the snare. It's even saturating. Like it's peaking. The snare is making it peak. And honestly, that's part of the sound. Because they ran their tape machines hot. And off. Like it sounds good right now. It does sound good. That other tape machine brought some glue, but this... just brings it to that next just sounds like a record I don't know this, this tape machine on the mix bus is just magic and then after that I did another one of these EQs I boosted a little bit of low end I cutting a little bit from 300 to 300 so just a little boost uh, cut there um, and I'm boosting a little bit, one and a half dB from 1.2K to 4.8K. And you can hear that. It's just, it's that mid-range pre mid presence, right? And then I'm boosting a little bit of a shelf at 4K, so the brightness. I'm bringing up the brightness. And I'm cutting, no, I'm not cutting, it's linear. Okay, so off. So I probably thought, you know, when I added the virtual tape machine, now it's a little muddy. I need that presence up top again. And that's it. It brings it up there. It's, it's more abrasive. It's more in your face, you know? And then this one, this one I added kind of like at the end of my mix. And it really kind of messes with everything it's a very heavy-handed plugin but what i like about it is just the fact that it, it it creates that wow and flutter and it also just gives it like a it spreads out the upper frequencies in this like distorted way in a nice way and it adds a lot of trouble so let's listen to that with and without or without and with Right? And without. That just brought the final glue to it all. You know, now the snare isn't just like insanely loud, you know? Without. Listen to what it does to the treble. Off. like opened up you know the from like 4k up to like 12k off on it's just it's i love it it's an amazing plugin And then this uh, this last send here is for the space echo, which will be on the next episode. It will be the vocals one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial. And um, if you did, like, please share. Um, and yeah, it's been my pleasure. And thanks for stopping by. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you on the next video, which will be 
Lyndon John X's awesome vocal performance. Peace. Thank you.